After a long wait, Vulcan Centaur has finally launched for the second time. This flight is absolutely critical for ULA's future, but the rocket they hope will be their workhorse delivered a really poor performance. A serious incident occurred. But the ridiculous thing here is that despite both being considered to have in-flight anomalies, the way ULA and SpaceX are treated by the FAA is worlds apart. So, what exactly happened? Let's find out everything in today's episode. On October 4th, 2024, the Vulcan Centaur rocket, the highly anticipated successor to United Launch Alliance's ULA, Reliable Atlas V, undertook a critical test flight from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. The launch took place at 7.25 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time after several delays. At first, everything seemed to be going smoothly, and the launch was quite impressive. However, just 38 seconds after liftoff, an unexpected incident occurred. Experts identified that the problem originated from one of the two solid rocket boosters, SRBs, attached to Vulcan Centaur's core. Specifically, the nozzle of one of the SRBs was compromised, showing what appeared to be a burn-through. This led to the affected SRB releasing a broader exhaust plume than usual. As a result, the SRB's performance dropped, producing less thrust and causing an imbalance to the entire rocket. Shortly after the small explosion, Vulcan Centaur seemed to lose stability for a brief moment. The primary cause of this issue was determined to be a damaged nozzle on one of the SRBs. Listen, the first stage configuration of Vulcan Centaur on this flight was equipped with just two solid rocket boosters and two BE-4 engines built by Blue Origin. This is a minimal setup, offering very little redundancy in case something goes wrong. While the symmetrical arrangement of the boosters provides balance under normal conditions, it becomes a major vulnerability when one of them fails. When one SRB encountered a problem, it created a severe thrust imbalance. This resulted in a powerful torque, causing the rocket to tilt toward the malfunctioning booster. In the worst-case scenario, this imbalance could have led to a complete flip of the rocket, a catastrophic outcome that would have ended the mission in failure. Shout out to the BE-4 engines. To be fair, they performed impressively on this flight. Despite having a thrust vector control range of just 5 degrees, only about a third of what SpaceX as Raptor engines can handle. These engines were pushed to their limits. Throughout the flight, they likely operated at full gimbal just to keep the rocket flying straight. Moreover, the BE-4 had to maintain the stability much longer than expected. The goal was to get Vulcan Centaur through the period of maximum dynamic pressure, max Q, and reach its planned payload deployment position. That said, we have to admit that luck was also a major player in this outcome. Vulcan Centaur might not have been able to adapt and compensate so well if it had been carrying a heavy payload. Let's not forget that this flight was originally intended to carry Dream Chaser, a spacecraft weighing over 10 tons. No doubt the team at Sierra Space breathed a huge sigh of relief, knowing their precious vehicle wasn't unintentionally turned into an underwater submarine. Typically, when a rocket experiences an issue during launch, especially a severe one like Vulcan's, a mishap investigation is launched with the involvement of the Federal Aviation Administration. In the case of Vulcan, we saw sparks flying everywhere, debris scattering in all directions, events that would typically trigger a full-scale investigation. Yet surprisingly, the FAA was like, there is no need for an investigation into ULA's Vulcan launch. How on earth? How could such an obvious malfunction not require an investigation? Is it simply because the rocket didn't veer off course or because there was no immediate danger to the public? This decision also raises questions about transparency in the space industry. Because, in just the past three months, SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket has faced three separate groundings by the FAA due to flight anomalies. The first incident happened in July when a liquid oxygen leak during a Starlink satellite launch resulted in the loss of 20 satellites, leading to a 15-day launch suspension. Then, in August, another anomaly occurred when Falcon 9's first stage booster failed to safely land on the drone ship as planned. Instead, it toppled into the ocean after a fiery touchdown, prompting FAA intervention once again. This time, a shorter three-day grounding was imposed. The most recent event came in September during the Crew-9 mission. Although the primary objective, safely delivering astronauts to the ISS, was completed, Falcon 9's second stage did not land in its designated recovery zone. Despite the rest of the mission being flawless, Falcon 9 remained grounded until October 11th. What's notable here is that in all three cases, initial investigations didn't find any direct risk to public safety. Yet the FAA still grounded Falcon 9 for a total of about a month, significantly disrupting SpaceX's launch schedule and affecting its customers. It's important to emphasize that SpaceX has an overall stellar safety record with hundreds of successful launches. But Vulcan? It's only flown twice, had a serious anomaly, and the FAA basically is like, no worries, you're good, keep going. 
It's almost too easy to see how differently the FAA treats each space company, as if they're using different rules and standards for different players in the industry. And I don't know if they'd take another 60 days to issue the next launch permit. After all, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service surely needs to know if any Vulcan debris happened to hit a fish. This Vulcan Centaur flight carries deep strategic importance for ULA. The main objective was to secure CERT II certification, a crucial step that would qualify Vulcan to compete for U.S. military payload contracts, some of the most lucrative and significant deals in ULA's portfolio. Specifically, ULA and SpaceX are set to go head-to-head -head in the competition for U.S. Space Force military satellite launch contracts. Both companies, along with Blue Origin, have been selected to provide launch services for the National Security Space Launch and SSL program from 2025 to 2029, with the total value of contracts reaching up to $5.6 billion. Currently, the Space Force is eager for Vulcan to be ready for the 25 backlogged military launches that were awarded to ULA back in 2020, when Vulcan's first flight was originally expected to happen in 2021. All the Space Force needs now is to see ULA replicate the success of Vulcan's first launch before committing military payloads to Vulcan's third flight, expected by the end of this year. However, ULA's delays have raised concerns within the Department of Defense. In a letter sent to the heads of the space divisions at Boeing and Lockheed Martin, Assistant Secretary of the Air Force Frank Calvelli used strikingly blunt language, expressing that he is growing concerns about the development of the Vulcan rocket, one the Pentagon plans to rely on for launching critical national security payloads, but that has been delayed for years. ULA doesn't have much time left, and it's quite possible that there has been some behind-the-scenes intervention to help push things forward more quickly, especially considering that ULA, a two-decade-old organization, was originally established to provide the Department of Defense with assured access to space. However, it's certain that ULA will conduct a thorough internal investigation to determine the cause of the issue. ULA knows Vulcan needs to operate flawlessly, not just for safety, but to earn the trust of potential customers, particularly the U.S. Department of Defense, their most valuable client. The current situation raises more questions, especially with key stakeholders remaining silent. So far, the Pentagon has made no official statement on whether Vulcan is considered reliable enough for critical military missions. This silence could mean they're cautiously evaluating the situation, or perhaps they're waiting for further details from ULA and the FAA. The FAA has also yet to issue an official statement about whether they'll require ULA to conduct a public investigation into the incident with their involvement. Meanwhile, Tori Bruno is being extremely cautious in his comments. In this context, the question now is whether Vulcan will need a third test flight before it can bid for defense missions. What do you think about this issue? Share your thoughts in the comments below. All right, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth looks at the latest advancements in space technology. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.